Hello and welcome to our podcast. Once again, we have a very special guest that we are honored to have who's graced us with his time today. You'll recognize him, Derek Johnson. And although he needs no introduction, we're still going to read his bio verbatim. Now, before we get started, if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow and others to gain the knowledge that you are currently acquiring. Uh, Derek, as you know, is a United States retired Army veteran, uh, independent country music artist, writer, and producer. He's most notably known for Billboard hits such as Real Cool Kinda Hot and Right Beer Now. <laughs> uh, Johnson is also a passionate patriot, historian, and uh, military government analyst. Uh, his purpose and his mission is to follow the Lord and then help him educate Americans about military laws, orders, executive orders, specifically as it relates to our Constitution and the founding of America. Derek created a, the blueprint at thedocuments.com uh, to be served as an educational tool and resource that is openly available to the public. Uh, it's now available in his book, The Midnight Rider Rides Again. Derek, thank you for joining the podcast. We're honored to have you today. Well, it's good to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. I do want to make a quick correction. Uh, the documents.info, okay. uh, just in case. Yeah, because I don't know where the documents.com goes, but just in <laughs> case it was something bad, we want to make sure. Uh, but no, thank you for correcting that. I appreciate that. We always want to be as accurate as possible. So, um, so Derek, obviously people ask you, you've been interviewed many times, as we know, and you get a lot of good standard cogent questions about you know, continuity of government and President Trump. We're going to get into that. But I think for us, it would be more important for our audience to know, and a question that we don't often hear asked to you, is the way to set the table properly. And that is in regards to your faith. You, like me, are a born-again Christian, a practicing Christian who is working on his relationship with the Lord on an ongoing basis. So with that in mind, I think it would be good for our audience to know, how did you come to the Lord? How old were you when you, saved, when you were saved? And as you've grown your relationship with the Lord, how has that shaped and garnered who you are as a person today? Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm your typical, you know, when, when I open my mouth, everybody instantly hears the South. <laughs> and then when everybody hears the South, they hear the Bible Belt, uh, especially if you're 40 years old or older, you, you'll remember the terms the Bible Belt. But, um, you know, I've I've always quarreled with the whole, and I don't I say quarreled, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't argue about Earth being round or flat. I don't ar argue, I don't argue about things that, that we can't tangibly put our hands on. So I like to bring terminology into the picture. So, you know, I, Growing up in the South, your predominant big bases are like Baptist and then Church of Christ. And then you have Pentecostal and, and Assembly of Gods in the South. Um, and the big debate is once saved, always saved, or can you backslide? Um, and I, I think that it's a combination of both. You know, so I'm one of those guys that's like, well, I grew up in church. I grew up with my grandmother, who was a saint of a saint. Uh, she was just a few months shy of being 89 years old when she passed. And my my mother and I, which my mother has more of the story than I do, but but I'm not going to tell my mom's age because I'm not getting in trouble today for that. But uh, my mother, at her age when my grandmother passed, was like, I've never heard my mother cuss or raise her voice. And I, as her grandson, can also testify that I never once heard my grandmother raise her voice or say a cuss word. Now, that doesn't mean that that she didn't have problems and that she couldn't uh, miss the gates of heaven herself. However, when I think of my raising, my grandmother took me to church. She would drive 25 miles two ways uh, to pick me up and take me to church every Sunday, every Wednesday night as well. Um, if she could, or if I wasn't doing something with my with my mom and dad, uh, so I always had the foundation. The foundation was always there, um, but you know, we we each individual, however you got to find that personal relationship, um, it, it it may take you however long. Hopefully, it doesn't. But you know, I tell people I don't think everybody needed a, a an accident or a freak accident or any kind of thing like that to come to God, but I did. Um, and uh, and it was just a, a matter of a lot of things that had built up in my years and my, you know, what what I thought I knew and what I did know. And then it just 
trashed down in a different manner. Um, but it was as simple as uh, a random phone call coming completely out of nowhere from someone who said, my name is so-and-so and I'm with this church and I, God sent me to have a prayer with you. And I'm like, that my phone didn't even work in that area. It's never worked in this region. So, you know, it was something as simple as that. And it was really a simple little word that they, they said, they said, you know, that even God gives some of his strongest loads, his heaviest loads to his toughest soldiers. But even you can't carry the weight of the cross. That's when you hand it back to Christ. You acknowledge Christ and say, I can't take it any further. And God knows that breaking point in everybody's life. And I don't think we ever eclipse that. I think it's kind of like being a songwriter. You know, we don't ever eclipse being the greatest songwriter until someone else deems that we're the greatest, whatever that is. Uh, I think we should always strive uh, to be the greatest we can be. And that's what I've done, you know, and I've, I've learned a lot even going viral. I mean, just something as simple as that, you know, uh, my first video, I was, ah, <laughs> you know, giving, giving, you know, but, but, you know, I think that's probably what put me where God wanted me to be. Uh, but once I completely surrendered everything and, and you'll know that only you're going to know when you completely surrender, I can't know it for you. You can tell me that you did. But only you're going to know in your life when you completely surrender. I knew when I completely surrendered my life because I became content and happy with where God had me at the moment. Even though it wasn't where I wanted to be, I knew in my heart that, okay, I've laid everything on the ground. And it it didn't come overnight. It wasn't like it, it, it came overnight. But when I laid everything on the ground, what I knew that I was carrying at God's feet and said, okay, all right. I've been 99.9% .9 before even in that one little, that one little decimal when I laid it all down, that was March, 2022. And then I went viral August, 2022. Now that don't mean that's going to happen for everybody out there, but only God knows where you are in your life. And when I completely did that and completely surrendered everything to him, um, then I had to, I, God knows, it's kind of like the Old Testament. That's why the Old Testament is also important because the Old mm -hmm. Testament talks about how people didn't put things down before they entered the temple and God would strike them dead. Now, that was before the atonement of Christ's blood. That was a whole different kind of, obviously, I know that's a whole other can to open there. <laughs> but the principle being, the principle being is that God knows too how much you lay down, but God also knows he knows, can you handle what he's going to bless you with when he does it on the other side? Because when he gave me this big platform, here I was trying to be, and I did, I had two verified billboard hits, but they didn't take off like they're supposed to in country music, right? When I, and, and I know the secrets of that, which is also why I'm writing a book about that. But But there's a reason why, there's a reason why they don't take off in another kind of manner. However, because of that, that flippage, I already knew. I already was seeking a form of popularity, seeking a form of a platform, right? Because you, it, there's no other reason why you're in music, especially trying to hit Billboard, if you didn't want some kind of big audience, uh, mm -hmm. because that's what keeps your music going. Yeah. Uh, so, but I thought I was disciplined before then. But I know now what God was doing with me because, once again, he knew when I laid it all down, he knew that my heart could lay it all down. He also knew that my heart was ready to accept the other side of this because the other side of this is what other people don't see. When you get instant, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of followers, you can abuse that just as easily as, as it was given to you. So God knew my discipline and structure that I had been prepared before. I went viral. When I laid everything at his feet, that's when the preparation started with God, with my heart and God, with my mind and God, with my spirit and feeding me. And I fed myself the things that was needed. I went to mentors who I won't name because they don't want to be known. But I have preachers who are mentors who I asked and they gave me, you know, things that where I was and they were that they had that much wisdom to know exactly where I was in my life. And they didn't try to give me something that I couldn't handle myself either. They gave me the things I needed at that moment to build that foundation. And then when I built that, here's another little thing. 
now now this and then now this and so forth and so on so i think that's important and a lot of people don't get to hear that and that's very important because there may be someone out there that god's waiting to use but maybe you haven't prepared yourself for what comes with that because it, it would be easy to abuse this platform um and i don't because i know where god I know where he wanted to use me, and I I I know that now. Looking back on the years of my life, going, hmm, I now know why that didn't happen. Oh, I know why it didn't happen this way, but now it's happening this way. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Because there's you know, you and I have been alive long enough to look back at our lives in our relatively young age and see the sequence of things and things we thought we knew and God had a, a much different, bigger plan. You know, it's just proof of Isaiah, right? That his ways and thoughts are higher than ours. And and he, he gives us that time of perspective to catch up. You know, he's so gracious. So yeah, great. He great is gracious expo- for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think to a fault, yeah. but thank goodness, right? That he's not us. <laughs> but uh, right. thank you. That was a great overall explanation of your testimony. And I, I know that will bless a lot of people. So thank you for that. Um, a good segue you kind of talked about it was your music. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit. But how old were you when you first started playing music? And and when, what was the point where you kind of ascertained that you were going to want to or be able to make a living at this to, to the present day? I tell people too soon because, <laughs> I, uh, you know, a lot of people are intrigued when I keep saying I'm writing this book about country music industry and you know, and, and there's a lot of people who are, who are writing in about that. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. But, you know, I tell people too soon because there's two sides of that. And there's an innocent side where my grandfather and Hank Williams Sr. were roommates, which they, back then they didn't call it roommates. It was like a boarding mate. Uh, they lived in the same house in the same hallway, right across the hall from each other. And, um, in Mobile, Alabama. It was before Hank obviously went to Nashville. It was during the World War II uh, shipping uh, boom when all the men had to to move to the ports uh, to build ships. Um, So my grandpa, though, had already been playing guitar. He had already uh, learned guitar uh, probably about 12, 13, somewhere in there himself. His matter of fact, his sister taught him how to play, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't know where she picked it up. We don't know that. Um, but his sister taught him a few chords. He picked it up, um, and he started playing the, the old honky tonks back in that day. And you didn't have to be a certain age to get in back then. They didn't, they didn't really, if you look like a man, they let you in. Um, so, and he started playing those circuits and there were a lot of circuits back then. It wasn't just a Louisiana hayride. They had hayrides all over the States and the South and, uh, different kind of bars and venues and Natchez, Mississippi, uh, all out through Texas uh louisiana etc but uh my grandpa was playing those circuits already and he linked up with hank and they would hitchhike around town hitchhike places play different places back then uh but my grandpa was more of a just a guitar player uh back then Uh, he did sing but uh when he went out on the road he was just playing guitar um so you know when i came along i was the only grandchild on that side of the family and uh so i uh (laughs) I I was that that kid that I love my grandpa's right because they I thought they hung the moon um, and and it's the there's a song out there uh, grandpa because uh, grandpa told me so it's by Kenny Chesney well I mean I I did I thought just like that song says I thought he could he could look at the moon and say the fish are gonna bite today and and you go out there and fish and they bite and then you look at the moon one day and he, they're not gonna bite today I'd still go fish and they wouldn't bite <laughs> so I picked up early that. Grandpa knows something I don't. Um, and one day I was like six or seven years old. He asked me, did I want to learn to play guitar like grandpa? And I was like, sure do. <laughs> I thought that was going to be easy. But um, and, and ironically, I was I was more embarrassed back then. I was shy. I, I know a lot of people would probably find that hard to believe that I was ever shy in my life. But um, he would show me a chord in the living room. And I'd run down the hallway, and he has a long house. I'd run down the, the hallway of that ranch house and go in the back room, shut the door, and try to learn that chord. And I'd forget it quick. I'd run all the way back down to the other side of the house. I did that back and forth for years. And so I learned that. And then he told me, he's like, you know, country music, uh, you, you need to be a writer. 
if you want to make it, you need to be a writer. You need to learn to write and write and work on it. Don't be embarrassed. It's not going to come easy. If it don't come natural, it's not going to come easy. Um, so, you know, I started at a young age and, um, <laughs> and my dad would tell me, I remember, I remember when people say, what are you going to be when you grow up? I'd say, I'm going to be a country music singer. And uh, my dad would tell me, you can't tell people that that's not a real job. Um, and that's not bad to say. I know there's a, I know that kids need a dream, but when it comes to George Strait and it comes to Alan Jackson, when it comes to that level, uh, kids need to know reality, uh, because in all reality, um, I, you know, I always joke, I think it was God's ultimate plan for me, but I also ultimately joke that you can spin your wheels a little too long in Nashville. Uh, by thinking it's a real job and by thinking that you legit have a chance because it's a business um, and it's not an easy business to figure out. Um, so there, there's that. Um, and then I moved to Nashville after I did what my dad asked me to do. He wanted me to go to college. I went to college, uh, finished, finished that degree. Then I moved to Nashville um, and it didn't, uh, it didn't come overnight. I mean, it was like, it was a rude awakening. Uh, the very first meeting I ever had about songwriting, I got chewed out <laughs> and uh, it was by a hit songwriter, Hall of Fame uh, songwriter. Uh, but that one meeting was kind of like when a cowboy gets bumped off, you hit the ground where well, you got you got one option. You can I mean, I guess you have two. I guess you could lay there until someone picks you up or you can get back up and try again. Um, and so. You know, I took that as a constructive uh, criticism and then uh, stayed in town and <laughs> one thing led to another and, you know, but it took a while. It, it took me longer than the average, even person who figures it out. It took me, they say on average Nashville's a 10 year town. Well, it took me 12 to have a hit. So <laughs> if that tells you anything. Well, I mean, it's just that was just God's process for you, right? But the best part is, Derek, with what you know and and the new, um, however you want to call it, world season that we're entering into, it's it's like you're going to get a reset of sorts, knowing what you know now to to go higher, because then God's giving you a platform and all these different mediums to propel you for that next step, as you said. So that's a great it's a great story though about how you got started, and it it it's one that I've heard before in different ways, but it's nice because yours is has a familiar ring, but it's also personal at the same time. So it's a nice, you know, a nice blend. So thank you again for that. Um, another question on, on the line of unconventional questions I want to ask you today is, again, and we'll, we'll get into the, you know, the meat of what you typically talk about, you know, rule of law and continuity of government, all that. But people are expecting that. What I wanted to ask you about the next thing is about <clears throat> what we concentrate here heavily, Derek, is the financial system, specifically the gold standard, what President Trump's been working on with the Patriots and the military and all that for quite some time. Um, but my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that you do have a fairly uh, proficient knowledge, I think is a good word, of the new financial system with the QFS. So I'd love for people to hear your take on what you are aware of with that, where you see us going, and where do you see us at present rate? Because there's a lot of consternation about you know, disinformation of we're here, we're not here. It's it's confusing, and you can bring a lot of clarity to the confusion. So I was wondering if you, you know, be kind enough to touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I the first thing I always start out with we we are in an age of discernment, right? And there's been things in the past. If you're a reader like myself, uh, or if you paid attention in school uh, when they actually well back when they taught history, uh, and and quit. I always tell people, don't don't worry so much. Is it uh, was what we taught the the absolute pinpoint down to the truth? At the end of the day, you're always still going to have a gut instinct. It doesn't matter what you're taught. You're always going to be uh, given some kind of feeling by God Himself and a gut instinct, no matter what you're taught. All right, and that's okay because you're a human. You have a thought process. My thought process ain't your thought process. All right. The things that I question God may not be the things you question God with. Um, and I think it's okay to question God to a level of not doubt, not doubting him by uh, going against faith and the whole purpose of faith. But it's okay to question um, because we are 
given free will. So when God gave us free will, then he expects us to, to have thoughts on this or why this and, and why that. So the first thing, age of discernment. There's been multiple ages in the past, and they all went through different kind of stages in those ages. We're in the age of discernment where we have internet access. It's great when it's great, but boy, when it ain't, it's not, right? And the same thing with social media. It's great when it's great, but it's not when it's not. Um, but the, the key with that discernment is that your gut instinct, your faith, and whatever your, your value and your core values are, then you, you have to trust that gut. I always tell people that the first thing I look at, the only reason I'm here is because of Donald John Trump. All right. I remember when my dad said, I know who I'm voting for. And when he announced that he's running. All right. So from the very get go, that's when my family was like, we're voting for him because of this reason right here. He's an outsider. He was an outsider to the system. All right. And I had already been telling all my friends and family for years. I'm like, man, if we just had one person that was a that's a businessman, you know, has nothing to do with politics. So I, I teach people those words too. Terminology matters. We got to get back to vocabularies and terminologies, grammar, punctuation, things of that nature, tones, expressions. They have reasons. Every one of you have been in a relationship. All right. And we're not going to talk about significant others as far as like what kind, but every one of you been in a relationship. Why do we hold each other to a standard of action, speak louder than words, if we're not going to apply that everywhere else? All right, so we have that domain. God gave us this territory. He gave us this chance to live, to breathe, to do his will, to do his work, to be here on the planet, to be good people, just be a decent person. That's what I tell people at the end of the day, just be a decent person. You don't mean you had to be perfect, just be decent. All right, so Donald John Trump was put here for a reason. He's in his place for a reason. God called him to be where he is for a reason. He just had this speech a few days ago. He said, specifically, he said, they can take my name off of everything, but they'll never take the cross away and take it down. All right, if that man didn't mean that right here, and every one of you that that have had a fall and a, and a uh, contentment and then a, a blessing like we all have uh, that I know I've had. All right. I know that God gave me that. I know that spirit that I feel uh, when I wake up. I feel it every day because I practice it every day and I keep that going. Donald John Trump, you've seen his past. Oh, yep. Sure. Absolutely. All right. But we also saw where he became a Christian and all the people gathered around him praying in those rooms. And then you heard his acknowledgement of Jesus Christ. All right. So you've witnessed the past of Donald Trump. You've witnessed the coming to Jesus of Donald Trump. And you've witnessed the acknowledgement of Christ by Donald Trump. If he didn't mean any of that, I think God would strike him dead. And I don't mean that being to whatever, but I, I honestly feel like he would or something would be snatched out from under. All right, so that's the first thing. So if the thief on the cross can look over and acknowledge Jesus Christ, we need to quit worrying about the past. So that's the first thing I do is I tell people, I took Donald Trump's torch and I know how to carry it and run with it. Not that he's going to drop it and not that he's going to get tired himself, but I'm one of those where he, he just reached back and lit my torch and I'm doing the same thing. So that's the first thing I tell people is if you think Donald Trump just walked away for four years and just said, oh, we have it all, we've caught them all, the best is yet to come, oh, I'm I'm the only one standing between them and you, and if he says all the stuff he says, but he walked away for four years knowing that they had it all and caught it all, why would you want him? You wouldn't. That'd be like someone not having your back. I love that quote out there. It says, I, I want a friend who will talk who will talk about me in a room I'm not in the same way they'll talk about me about the room I am in. So Donald Trump, I tell people, if you trust a man, you got to trust the plan. But you can't trust the plan if you don't know the plan. And President Trump has laid this out from day one. When he walked down the, the escalator to announce his presidency, the picture that was taken, and, and, and of all pictures and of all scrolls, the picture that was taken in the background was gold. Gold was on that scroll of the stock market. All right, so, it, you know, did they plan that? It doesn't really matter. 
I believe everything is God divine, all right? Providential. It's all there. Uh, he speaks all the time. He'll have a Chevy Silverado behind him. Silverado, and it'll be a silver Silverado, all right? His gold shoes he just came out with. Um, he uh, put a tweet out. I don't know how long it's been now. I have to go back and look, but he put a tweet out. Have fun lobstering. All right. There, there's a lot of stuff that he's done that's just like, you'd be like, what, what is that? Unless you're from the South, you, you know what, going out and getting lobster. Well, we, we don't do it like we used to in the, in the, I mean, we did crabs that way, but not, not lobsters. All right. So there's a lot of things that, that are what we call comms and optics and codes. Um, and if you know that, if your foundation or the laws and the orders that have been put into place, and you don't have to know everything, but just the ones that have been put into place by Donald Don Trump, then when you see those things and hear those things, you'll be going, that's this, that's that. All right, so I tell people the QFS. Dr. Scott Young is probably the best I know at it, um, and he and I have a lot of conversations. The level of which I know is, well, President Trump's the one who put into a uh, law, the Quantum Initiative Act, all right? The quantum financials are part of that. Uh, quantum financial is a part of the quantum whole quantum system. There's a lot of levels of quantum. Uh, I was seeing a comment the other day about, uh, well, once this does this, then the quantum bank will be established. The quantum bank's already been established. The quantum bank is in uh, Suwannee, Georgia. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot of entities that's already been put into place. It's just a matter of implementing those. Uh, so you can go to uh, the comp comptroller uh, of the currency, uh, OCC.gov, and they give you some examples in there. Now, there's going to be always someone who wants to argue saying, well, if they're giving you an example of what a fraud letter looks like, aren't they saying that's the fraud? No, they're showing you that, that hey, that because we're implementing these things, because we're putting these things in place, you will be receiving letters from people who aren't a part of this system who are going to be using the same terminology, kind of like people uh, who fake all my profiles. All right, they're writing people. I got a message this morning. Someone said, hey, they tried to message me. Uh, that's what they're doing. So that uh, alerts, alert dash three, and there's an alert dash four, but there's one alert on the, the controller. Uh, and it tells you as we go through the global reset of the financial system. So it talks about that. Um, and then it talks about the USMCA. All right, NAFTA. All right, NAFTA was, was uh, you know, decimated by Donald John Trump. He brags about it all the time. He put in the UMC at UMCSA, so, or I, USMC, ah, USMCA, yeah, back. you had it. <laughs> USMCA. It's the same thing as the United States Marine Corps with the agreement. That's what I joke with, the USMCA. Uh, say it fast, you know, say that fast <laughs> 10 times in a row. Right. Uh, but he brags about these things. Which is fine because he he established those. He gets to be the face of the one who established it, the implementation of these things. Um, so as far as like, you know, all the all the XRPs and the XL, all these things, and then the gold and the silver, you know, I tell people I'm I'm not someone who has studied in the sense of telling you what to do with your money. I do say this though. I tell people all the time. Until Donald John Trump tells you to do something specifically, I, th that's going to be up to you. You still have free will to do a lot of things with your money and your assets. But same thing like the stock market. Uh, I've studied the stock market. I do have a master's in business. Um, I love the stock market as far as, you know, like just learning how they did it, how they implemented it, the secrets and, and, and things like that. Saying I love it, meaning like I love trying to break down that system. Um, and figuring out what they're doing and how they do it, uh, because it's still a system. It's a man-made system. Um, so it's it's man-made money playing man-made money and trying to gamble on man-made money. Um, so, you know, when it comes to the QFS and those things, I tell people all the time, if President Trump don't tell you to do something specifically or there's not an allusion to it or someone who can break it down, like even Dr. Scott, who is fluent in it, then... I say stay away from it until you know otherwise. So when you hear people saying, oh, uh, take your 401k and move it here, well, there's penalties with that. So you may lose money and get in something. 
And then that that something may have someone say, well, I charge 2% of that movement myself. So someone's making money while you're losing money to put money. At, so you got to be careful with some of that. Uh, and that's just coming down to straight business and just knowing, okay, well, there's got to be some penalty to this and there's got to be some gain somewhere to somebody. Kind of like the way they do with cars today. When you go buy a vehicle, you if you go in there saying, ah, I only have this amount a month. Well, they're going to finagle their numbers to make that monthly payment, but they're still going to get it out of you in the long run. Right. Right. So they'll say what they'll do to you is they'll go, well, we here's a five year deal for 500 a month. You're like, oh, I, I, I can't. I can only do 300 a month. I told you. So they're going to come back with a seven year deal. <laughs> and and some people don't even hear that. They don't even see that. They just see that the number matches, but they're still getting the same amount of money. So it's the same thing. And I think that that's confusing a lot of people out there uh, because there are going to be fates and frauds. President Trump and his and his gold cards. I mean, look at the look at how many people fake that. Uh, so I think a lot of that also is is also to bring down certain people as well. Uh, only even the lower levels, because when you decimate a high level of people and you start working down, well, all these people down here were going to be the ones that, that keep going up here, right? So mm -hmm. I think a lot of this is also still part of the operation as far as you know, like the the SEC and the the acronym, the pause that President he says it he said it again. About three weeks ago, I don't know, I hadn't heard him say it recently uh, as far as any more recent, but he said, we're going through the pause. Well, that pause, ladies and gentlemen, we know life ain't pausing. We know your 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 income's not pause. Nothing's pause, so that pause has an acronym, meaning pause is an acronym for the SEC, the Securities and Exchange, Public Alert, Unregistered Soliciting Entities, pause. All right, so they're they're going through all these different companies and organizations um, and different people who are using certain terms, certain things against the SEC, right? And they'll freeze those assets and block them, all right, and investigate them and figure out who are they working with, who are they working for, um, if they are, are they committing any crime? If they are, then punishment seizure so there's a lot of stuff going on right now and it, it does pay to know the little entities of what donald john trump and and it's not just him i mean all congress it's a bipartisan thing it's not a partisan uh it's not anything partisan all right so it's bipartisan in congress and, and you got to quit looking at the news saying Congress is doing things because the federal continuity directives over here show you that Congress has certain things to do. But then also because 95% of America don't know the laws and orders, don't know what's going on. They just think Congress is doing these things and Congress only. They forget that we're the government, right? So it is a congressional thing. And if you, it depends on what side of the aisle you're sitting on. The aisle that I show people is like, put all that away, your anxiety, your fears, your stresses, you know, uh, your your negative energy. All right. Put all I can put all this over here for you. Put it in this category. All right. My hand is right near John's head. If you can't see it, it's right, like right <laughs> here. See it. But well, I'm not putting it on his head, but we put all this stuff over here. All right. And here's how you think logically, critically, strategically, but also here's your basic functions of how our government operates. All right. And this is not new. It's it it may be new to you, but it's not new. This is not new. It's it's now it's a different kind of operation. Every operation is different when it comes to that. I've had some older veterans say, well, it don't look like what I what it looked like when I was in. I'm like, it's not supposed to. No operations the same. No missions the same. All right. Now there could be some some same principles along the way, obviously, but that's where those terminologies come in. And I think a lot of people are still getting hung up on just the the saturation level of a lot of people. I I don't like when I I tell people if someone has to call themselves beautiful themselves, in the sense of like a post. Look at me. I'm all beautiful. To me, you're, you're, it makes you less beautiful kind yeah. of deal. So it's like you got a lot of people claim to be experts, 
I don't ever claim to be an expert. I just claim to be a reader. Uh, I'm an expert reader when it comes to like that. Like I tell people, I'm an expert reader. I'm an expert researcher, but it's based off of my reading and my research, right? And I show people, here's what I've read and here's here's what is in place, all right? So I don't let my emotions go way over here on stuff that that that's just all this or someone talking. Matter of fact, I have friends Good, good friends will text me. Did you, did you watch this? I'm like, I don't watch anything. Now, you know, you as a host, you probably understand this a lot better than anybody. By the time you have your friends and your family in your family time and your friend time, then you have your research time and your read time. By the time you're doing all that and you dwindle down to what time you have left, you don't have a lot of time. So what I try to do is tell everybody, be your own host. Mm. have your family have your family have your friend well god first your family your friends right put that put that discipline in place put that structure in place put those priorities in place then if you have a question on what's going on well there's a way to find out but you got to know what if you're going to come i don't mean this in a bad way but if you're going to complain about something well there's a way to find like our government our government has a functionality to it. It's got three branches. Well, that's the one I always say. It does sound repetitive, but this is what gets people to go read and research. Three branches of government. All right, 68% of America, 68% of 332 million people cannot just name those. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me what they do. Just name them. All right. And how many percent of Americans are complaining about Congress? So when you take those two numbers and go, okay, can you name the three branches of government? No. Well, why are you complaining about Congress? Mm. Right? So I, I tell people, look, it's okay to complain. It's okay to, to, to have questions. It's okay to express frustration with a process, but only till you know the process. Mm. So you want to have you a, a card. I call it the complaint card. You, your complaint card is by knowing the functionalities of government in those systems. All right, because we are, we are that. We are the government. That's what the Declaration of Independence established. We're the government. They are called representatives for a reason. What's the root word of representative? Representative. Represent. Represent. Right. So they represent us. Well, they can't represent us if we forget our own foundation of which of what we established. Right. So it's really that simple. When when 332 million people flip that around. And realize that 535 members of Congress work for us. That ratio, all of a sudden, is an astronomical ratio in favor for us. 332 million telling 535 members what they're going to do and how they're going to do it in each state, versus 535 telling 332 million how things operate for them. See, when you flip that ratio, it's astronomical. So that's the thing mm. with the QFS is I tell people, look, I mean, I I know what little bit I know because of Donald John Trump and Congress implementing what they did. And then the visuals around it every day does have to do with the military. It does have to do with this aircraft, the foreign aircraft. All of it ties in because when people say I had a, had someone the other day go uh, in the comment box said, I'll start believing Derek when I see things enforced. Well, you are, I ought to be the like to that person. This is ego aside, but, but, but being funny here, being some humor, you know, that the movie, uh, Castaway and ha- Tom, that volleyball, he, he, Wilson, he worshiped <laughs> that volleyball because yeah. he had nothing else. But there's so much visualization every single day of the laws and the orders that Donald John Trump and, the Congress bipartisan put into place that I almost can't post every day myself everything because there, there's either someone being removed or someone someone died, right? There, there's mm-hmm. there's so much stuff happening that that it's it's all there. But the most simplest form are the things like we saw in Texas a few days ago. The simple things are the aircraft and going, okay, if you believe in veterans, don't you want to believe that uh, we have orders in the military? We have laws in the military. You can't believe in a veteran if you don't believe in our military laws and orders. So 
it's little things like that. It all ties in. And I tell people once again, I worship Donald Trump in the right way. I don't worship him, but I worship him in the right way because I know he was called of God to be where he's at and everything he's put into place is there. And I'm the one that takes all that stuff and breaks it down to show you that if he tells you to do something then do it. And then, you know, if he says, go vote for this person, when he nominates somebody, you vote for them. All right. You don't, you don't question it. You vote for them. Uh, there's a reason behind everything because the military occupation sets it up. The continuity of operations is your big umbrella and everything's under that uh, or under those. Um, so the QFS is one little portion of it, but it's going to get back to what we were supposed to be, not mm. the reserve. I guess that's probably the other thing I probably should have brought up that you probably, you might've been thinking that, but the federal reserve, great example, 1913. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, 1961, JFK in January of 63 went straight to the treasury. He got 4.6 or $4.8 billion. He went around the Federal Reserve, went straight to the treasury. What happened 11 months later? All right, so that was him going against the federal corporation. And so that's why people do need to know a little bit about the federal corporation and how the United States became a corporation. All right. Came, it became a business, right? Well, businesses do what? Most businesses, a, a lot of them in the past have cheated on their, their taxes. They cheat on everything. But should we even have it in the first place? So there's always questions, right? But America became a corporation. And then what happened? It went downhill from there. And President Trump tells you all the time, he said, when I'm back as president, that doesn't mean he's not in. It doesn't mean he's not in command right now. There's commander in chief and president. But when I'm back, there's certain things a president can do that a commander in chief can't do, and vice versa. Hmm. She says I'm gonna do what? Put term limits on Congress. So, ladies and gentlemen, go back to 1951. Why did Congress put term limits on the president, but not themselves? So that shows how we led to a, a, a deeper level of the corporation and your monetary system. And then starting in the 60s with the military industrial complex and medical field, that's what Eisenhower said he didn't like. He didn't like the future of medical and military because of money, all right? Starting with the leaving the gold standard in mm. 68, you had the nits and shock of 72, right? 71 and mm -hmm. 72. Mm -hmm. That's when inflation and our all our systems started doing like that. Or if you want to look at it sideways, you know, what we actually have in, in the bank in inflation, right? So all this stuff started happening. And now it's like a hundred trillion a day. I mean, there's a number I saw the other day. I mean, it's like, how do you get control of that, ladies and gentlemen? That's what you've been watching is a clean out of the corporation. When Donald Trump went on this capitulation tour, that was all those countries surrendering, saying, I want to be a part of this. They're saying, I'll work with you. We will do a reset all over. All right. There was only a few that didn't. And the few that didn't, they're being punished for it. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a clean out of the whole system to be a reset for everybody. And the Bible even talks about a reset every seven years in the first place. All right. So there's a lot of things that people just don't know about because they don't they don't either know it's there or the right people aren't talking about that. And then we don't have we never had the right people in place to implement that because they built a system that fit their agenda that worked for them. All right. And if you were in that system for all these years, you got to go to the best colleges. You got to, do, you know, you got slapped on the wrist for certain things that, that you should have probably been in bars for. There's a lot of things that's happening right now. So that one little QFS, it it's not little because it's what? That's what rules everybody. Mm -hmm. And it rules us good or bad. Some, but we have to have money to survive. We know that. We have to have money to pay rent or mortgages and things of that nature. So what's the Bible say about it? It's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the lust of it wow. that's the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's the love of money. It's not the money itself mm -hmm. because we got to have it. So we haven't had the right people in place that knows how to handle that money, but also to, to benefit everybody 
And that's why it had to look this way. That's why it had to be an operation like this. You know, and President Trump tells people all the time, we got to give and take some places. You can't just be all gung-ho Republican and gung-ho this because there are some people who do think differently than us. But there's a way to live and let live. There's a way to make everybody happy, all right, but also not infringe on everybody's rights. And somebody had to be the big bad wolf. Somebody had to be that person to step in and go through a little hardship for a little while to be able to go, all right, I know it's going to be bumpy for everybody, but it's kind of like a pilot. There's some people who love turbulence. I don't know why, <laughs> but you're, you're all these thousand feet in the sky. A lot of things can happen in my mind, right? But there's all, and then there's some people there like me going, "Hey, can you can you tell us what's going on up there? <laughs> y'all do this for a living, <laughs> <laughs> right. you know? I tell pilot, I tell pilots all the time, y'all up there chilling like it's nothing. That's fine. But there's people back here screaming. All right, all you gotta do is get on your little microphone and say, "We got this." You know, it's all good up here. Uh, uh, Johnny just cracked a beer over here. It's okay that it, <laughs> no one's going to find out except for y'all. I mean, something funny, right? It just so yeah. the same thing, you know, and, and we got people who have been called to where they are for a reason. All right. And there's certain things you're not going to know and you don't need to know some of that. But President Trump told you in 2016, never again will we voice the public what's going on in our military, because if you find out, guess who else finds out? The enemy don't need to know when we're coming. But you Americans, I'll win you over by the economy. I'll earn your trust through the economy because that's what hits you the most, not the military. The military don't affect you daily in the sense of come to your house, da 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 da, da. It does overall like an umbrella, but it doesn't from another manner. So he earned everybody's trust. That's why so many people have left and woken up from even fascists and socialists and uh, BLM and all these different people realize this ain't a, it's not about that. This is what it's about. All right. So I know that's a long way around the world, but but it, it does tie in so many areas because finances are what finance the trafficking. Mm -hmm. It's the, all, all the bad, all the financial. It. So a lot of the money has been taken from our pockets have been going to dirty deeds, as I say it is. Mm -hmm. So the dirty money had to be tracked and it has to be cleansed and it has to be reset. Yeah, I mean, wow, Scott. Um, uh, wow, Derek. Sorry, I'm thinking of Scott Young because um, uh, he's a friend of mine, too. We did a show a few years back. He's actually going to be on our show Friday. So it's funny that you mentioned him, but uh, yeah, Derek, uh, that's that's fantastic um, deep dive. And obviously, there's a lot of subcategories, like you said, within the categories, a lot to unpack. Oh, yeah. So I'll give you I'll give you a chance to give you a breather on that because I know there's a lot of information because um, I only really have one question left for you today because you kind of touched on it about President Trump being the commander in chief transitioning back into a presidential role. And they are different functions, right? That's why he always says transition, I think, to greatness is alluding to that, amongst other things. Um, also, another thing I wanted to point out that you said that was really important, you talked about people having anxiety. We've touched on it with other guests. The first thought I had was Philippians 4, 6 through 8, you know, about turning that anxiety into prayer and giving it over to God as part of the surrender process. So it was a very underrated point I felt you made when you touched on that. Also, interestingly enough, you were talking about, you know, with President Trump back in 2015 when they were coming down the escalator. Another point, uh, Derek, to make to what you were saying is that uh, most people... You know, Santa Surfing has talked about it. I'm glad she brought it up. But uh, most people tend to miss it. When he was coming down the escalator, if you look over his head, there was a sign over his head. Do you remember that? And it says currency exchange. So he was telling you about the reset and the currencies being reset. We were talking about when they did the sword dance and handing the football over and all the comms inside of that. Uh, but it was also lettered in silver and bronze. So there was codes within codes that sometimes, as you said earlier, it takes a while to realize what we've learned in the past for it to catch up into our conscious level in the present. It's all these uh, uh, the subtopics or sub pieces of information that culminate into the greater element of where we are, for lack of a better term. So you unpacked a whole lot in that, and I was really enjoying how you broke that down. But um, And you did touch on my one of my questions about you know settling the age-old debate as President Trump really the president, commander in chief, and what all what that all means. You kind of tucked that in there, which was great. 
So I know you're busy, man. So the last question I have for you for today's show would be, since you answered that, is today, as you saw, the Supreme Court ruled and on the ballot favor in, in light of President Trump. I don't think for many of us following, that was a huge surprise. I think that was kind of a narrative for the, the normies. Um, but just if you could just briefly touch on why you feel that's so significant of an event and what you see coming ahead in the near future. Well, the other thing, too, if I briefly can touch on Texas, since I said that a while ago, so I mean, that I tell people I did a little thing on Facebook last night, and uh, of course, that's where I make all my videos that I put on Rumble. Uh, so, you know, if there was one thing, like if, like, I, I used the example last night. Everybody had, I, I joke, I, I use a lot of humor. That way, you know, I tell people, if you do have anxiety, you always got to have some humor in your life. Get Just do find something that'll make you laugh. There's a few comedians that I go to that they just make me laugh out loud. Wherever I am, I'm sitting, whatever, and I just, I just chuckle. And it's a great feeling to have. That's what we all need in life every day. Or a good friend to call on. Or someone who, it doesn't, it's like a dog. My dog, it don't matter what I do. My dog, I walk up, my dog is always happy, right? So you got to have something in your life that does that. But I tell people like I did last night was well, Christmas. I said, now, if you're Amish, you probably ain't watching this video in the first place. But, you know, I, know, I don't think they do Christmas. And then Jehovah Witness, if you're Jehovah. We're not knocking you, but just you can sit, you can sit this example out. I joke with them, right? But all jokes aside, your, there's one Christmas that everybody's keep able to go back to in your memory where you just like that it was the Christmas. It was the best Christmas, whether it was sentimental and it may have been a last Christmas with someone special or it was that gift as a kid that you just absolutely always go back to and you say, no offense to all the others, but this Christmas was the best because of this, right? Well, if there was ever a Christmas near the original inauguration date in history, which is today, March the 4th, is the original inauguration date in United States history for a president to be sworn in. It should have been Thursday in Eagle Pass, Texas. All right, President Trump told the whole world, I am your commander in chief, without saying, I am your commander in chief. He said it in a way that veterans that do know what's going on were like, right there. Right. So and every one of you, if you're still if you know me and you've been watching me and you've been kind of on the fence and you've just been kind of wet. Now's the time you should have hopped off the fence on the right side and in all Christian ways possible, stripped off your clothes and, and ran naked through the field going, oh, my gosh, it's it. There it is. The light should have come on it. Everything or whatever it is you do to celebrate. However, that is whatever that is. You should be going bazinga right front of them. All right, Eagle Pass, Texas, Donald Trump. All right, first off, Eagle Pass, Texas is 55 miles from Del Rio. Del Rio, even CNN and Politico will tell you, Del Rio is the hottest crossover, the illegal crossover point. All right, they covered that all through 2022. Del Rio, Del Rio, Del Rio. Biden was in Texas on Thursday, quote unquote, because he's not real, but Biden was down in Brownsville. That's 380 miles from Del Rio, Texas. Air Force One was not in Brownsville, Texas. Only two C-32s, which are Air Force Twos. All right, so there's that. All right, uh, Boeing's been shutting down everything lately. They shut down a main facility. Donald Trump, as president-elect, December 2016, said there will be a new deal with Boeing. We're going to restructure the deal if there's even a deal at all. So that's a big deal right there. What does he fly on? Rolls Royce. All right, so he's in Eagle Pass, Texas, 55 miles. Then they go down to Del Rio, all right? He told everybody when he arrived, he said, oh, we're down here because there's an issue at the border. We're going to fix that, all right? He addressed the press. That wasn't some little speech about, oh, I'm going to have a rally down here. This is for my campaign. He wouldn't be able to, he really wouldn't. Ethically, that really wouldn't be able to do that in one way. He could and couldn't. It just depends on your ethics. But to me, if he wasn't in the position he's in right now, that would be a little, little unethical, right? Because you'd be disrespecting the current quote unquote president if he was really president, right? But he's not. So you gotta you gotta look at everything like that. That's that level of strategically thinking, critically thinking, and, and then also ethically thinking. Then he goes to Del Rio. Who does he have with him? 
And he tells in his speech, he says specifically, specifically tells you, yeah, the operation was shown to me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a military operation. This is a military operation. Governor Abbott had already called off. He had already mentioned the suspension clause, which is in the Constitution. They hammered Trump. They, the media has been talking about this with Trump, 2022, 2023, 2021 even, about suspending the Constitution. All right, so all these optics are there for you. All these comms are there, all right? So Governor Abbott a few weeks ago mentioned the suspension clause and how they'll suspend the Constitution if the laws can't be enforced, all right? They also told the Federal Border Patrol, they, the National Guard of Texas and the Texas Guard. See, Texas, we have our own guard down there, Texas Guard. It's called the Texas Guard, all right? So they put up a flag on the top of their headquarters, come and take it. And they were talking to the Federal Border Patrol. And they told the Federal Border Patrol, if you get near this border, we'll we'll remove you too. All right, so they told the whole world who's in charge. Then on Thursday was the holy grail moment. Donald John Trump tells the whole world it's a military operation. He's got the governor of Texas with him. And he's got another beautiful, that guy probably will never want to be called beautiful ever again in his life. But there's a man right behind him. The most beautiful thing you could ever see was a regulation uniform. Every uniform around Joe Biden has been a non-regulation uniform. All right. Anybody who's a veteran, they are non-regulation uniforms. Or they'll show a Coast Guard with a Marine Corps. Well, God love you, Coast Guard. You puddle pirates never get any love, but you finally get some love, even though you never guard the president. But they got a Coast Guard with a Marine Corps. Uh, yeah. But once again, adjutant general standing right there with Donald John Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, the adjutant general is a senior officer of the National Guard of that state. And then it'll tell you specifically, if you Google adjutant general, it'll tell you, but I can tell you, but it'll tell you that way you can see it. I tell people, go look where you can tangibly see it. All right. But the adjutant general, he answers to the chief state executive unless, unless the National Guard have been federalized under Title 10. So that's a key line. That adjutant general answers to the state chief executive, who's the governor. That's what that's saying. That adjutant general listens to the governor unless the National Guard have been federalized by Title 10. Guess who federalized the National Guard? Donald John Trump. One million reserve components to active duty on March 27, 2020. It doesn't matter that that was four years ago. Has nothing to do with that. It has not been revised. It has not been revoked. It has not been rescinded. Therefore, it's still active. All right. Donald John Trump with the adjutant general. Had that been just the adjutant and the governor there? Then you would know. But because that's the first appearance with that adjutant general, the National Guard of Texas, that's the first appearance on TV with the governor and Donald John Trump. They're telling you right there that Donald John Trump is the commander in chief of a military occupation, which is found in the law war manual. Donald Trump's capitulation tour when he went to the forbidden city of China, when he went to North Korea, first president there, first person in China in 500 plus years in that forbidden city. Also Argentina. I mean, we could keep going Saudi Arabia, all the place. That's in chapter 11 of the law war manual that tells you your occupation. So all that rolls back around into the executive order 13848, which is just a little portion of it, just a little entity. But that one executive order back in September the 12th, 2018, has to do with what you're seeing with this ballot stuff. All right, because if the Supreme Court thought that President Trump created an insurrection on January the 6th, they would have ruled polar opposite. All right, because by the naked eye, by the by the average American eye, that was some form of insurrection on January the 6th or some form of a riot, some form of a protest gone wrong. That's not really a protest because it involved climbing over things and trespassing and things of that nature. So for the naked eye, everybody else over here that don't know about Executive Order 13848, they would still see that as that. But because there's an executive order way back over here with a key date. All right, ladies and gentlemen, President Trump was elected November 2016. The next election cycle would have been November 2018 and then November 2020 and then November 2022. 
This executive order was written September the 12th, 2018, right in the middle of the presidential election and the next cycle of election. All right. So that executive order inside of it has a key line. And I tell people, you don't have to know, you don't have to read the whole thing, but you should. But there's one key line in there that you can go ahead and skip to. I'll show you where it's at. Although no foreign power has altered the outcome or vote tabulation. Although no foreign power has altered the outcome or key conjunction or vote tabulation in any United States election. That's the key line. Well, that first line talks about mining your votes. It's saying that mining your vote has not been changed on the level of just changing. It was by an entity that changed it to create the balance they needed to cheat everywhere. It wasn't just in 2020. There's been cheating going on along, ever since the Dominion systems, computerized systems. There's been cheating going on. But they had to have a level. They had to have an order put into place. Therefore, they have a precedent of gathering evidence in order to be able to present that in a court or present that to the people. Before, it was just all not, not speculation. It, it was known, but it wasn't known as data collection points. So you got to have data. You got to collect data. You got to collect evidence. Anytime you go into court, defamation, slander, libel, whatever it is, you got to have data. You can't just go, oh, they talk about me all the time and da-da-da-da. You got to have evidence. I have loss of income or I, ha I can't get a job because of this. You, you have to have data and evidence. So that executive order 13848 and a key date of it or vote tabulation, ladies and gentlemen, that's chapter three or it's, uh, excuse me, it's three chapter 15 of the Constitution, right? It talks about vote tabulation. That means when they tabulate the votes of the Electoral College, which is January the 6th, all right? January the 6th was not Donald Trump versus Joe Biden and nobody else. January the 6th is a date that they call, they count the Electoral College votes for the president. All right, so that or vote tabulation negates what happened on January the 6th because they were telling you this is an operation. That order is still under the occupation. The occupation would have started November 2016. All right, and the continuity of operations started November 2016, even though theoretically uh, it would have started January the 20th, 2017, when Donald Trump raised his right hand. That's when the start would have been, per se. But this was a plan long before that. So the, all this always, if you have anxiety, stress, you always have to go back to, once again, the foundation. The foundation is the occupation and the continuity of operations as your umbrella. Everything falls under that. All right. But there's still a major portion of Americans who don't know any of this. So they have to play this role out for them as well. They have to get their attention somehow, some way. And unfortunately, some people just have to be pushed up into the corner of the, of the room and go, wake up, calm down, chill out. I got you. I'm not letting you go, though. You're not getting out of the corner until you look me in the eyes and, and you hear me out. <laughs> some people have to be done that way, unfortunately. And it's unfortunate for some of us that that do know what's going on. It's not unfortunate for me. I actually, once again, I know God called me here. Uh, and I know that that it does take patience with certain people. It takes patience with a process. It takes patience with an operation. It takes patience with missions. All right. They don't always go as planned. But some people have to be shaken. And some people have to be put into a corner, a wall, or a bad predicament to go, okay, at what point are you going to care about your nation? At what point are you going to care about illegals being here, taking jobs from you, taking money from you, taking it from your future, your children, the things that you're building for your future, the things you're building for your children? At what point are you going to care about these things? It's not saying we don't want people here. We want people here who buy into the American way of life, who buy into the American system. And we got to clean that system out, though, before we can even talk about an American system being good and wholesome. So that's you're watching the clean out process. And if you're semi awake, at least you're halfway awake. At least you're here listening, because there's ways to guide you even further to the answers of what Donald John Trump and Congress put into place and avoid watching mainstream TV until you know that foundation, because when you watch mainstream like I do, I can show you by the laws and orders what they're talking about and what they're doing 
kind of like these ballot things. This is all to show people, hey, if you're awake, this don't matter because Executive Order 13848 back here, it's got a national emergency attached to it. Why would Biden extend that three years in a row? See, that's the other key point of that. I'll, I'll you know, I, I don't mean to just keep talking here for, for you, but, but the, why would Biden extend the very order that would, would negate his whole presidency if he was really a president? I mean, that one order, okay, if you're someone who does, I'll play, uh, I, I know people don't like this word, Christians don't like this, but I'll, I'll play devil's advocate. That's what, that, it's just a term for people. Some people don't like that, mm -hmm. but I'll play the bad guy. Sure. All right, I'll say, okay, all right, let's say Joe Biden's really president. I know he's not, but let's say he is. All right. And we know for a fact that 2020 was Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. All right. Why would Joe Biden, if he had any inclination that there was cheating in 2020, all right, and flipping the votes, if Joe Biden saw all these people out there, if he was real and he saw all these people that looked at the numbers on TV, even CNN and all, they're in panic, right? Because that was part of the plan. But CNN is now not even in the headquarters anymore. They're in a tiny little building over in Atlanta, right? All this was bringing down these corporate, corporate, global elitist, fascist, socialists, et cetera. They're all linked together. But the numbers show that even, C I think it's 70% now of Democrats don't even want Joe Biden running. So you got 70 something percent of Democrats who don't want him running, that don't know what's going on, but they don't want him running. Then you got all the people supporting Donald Trump. If Joe Biden was real and he had any thought that it may be revealed one day of the election interference and the cheating, why would he extend the executive order that had a two year clause on it? Every national emergency has a two year termination, automatic termination, if it's not resolved. Why would he extend that three years in a row? Like it makes no sense for people, right? So, or people who know it makes no sense because it would ultimately be the thing that they go to court with and anybody who has a conscious, ethical mind, but critical thinking, strategic thinking, all the other kind of thinking, and you're presented evidence, you're like, here it is. This is what they've done for years. And he's the worst. They used him to be the, the fall man. Why would he extend that? So there's little nuggets like that, that if you're sitting there and you got stress, anxiety, if you're, if you're you know, you're frustrated and you're, you're, you're fatigued and you're ready for this to be over. And so it's never going to be over because America's a fight. It's kind of like being a Christian. You can't just reach a pinnacle one day and go, I know everything God wants me to know and, and this, that, and other, because right when you think you do, you don't, and he puts something else on you that tests your faith, all right? So I love the the uh, song that, that Elvis used to sing all the time about peace in the valley. You know, there will be peace in the valley for me. He didn't talk about the mountain. He didn't talk about the mountain, do you? Talk about peace in the valley, because we all have valleys we have to go through. And you're never going to reach that pinnacle until God's ready for you to, to go to the next step. And when you go to the next step, it's going to be another challenge. It's going to be another testing of your faith. <laughs> and it's got, so America is the same way. I think we're decimating it. We're cleaning it out. Yes. We're getting it to a maintainable level where we can sustain that and keep that decimated. But we got to have everybody knowing what's going on. That way, people can identify evil. People can identify a crook. People can identify a thief. So that's that's why it's important to know the legislation, the laws and orders, but this occupation that President Trump and the military are running and uh, why it's not uh, vocalized to the public. It had to be this way to catch everybody. Yeah, in, in, indeed. I mean, wow, that was really a fantastically articulated explanation of a lot of subjects compressed into one, because as you know, they're all intertwined. Uh, so Derek, um, we're going to put your links up at the end on our, our page, but just for people to hear from your mouth, uh, I'll leave you with the last thoughts. Where can people find your work and any parting thoughts you have for the audience today? Well, my parting thoughts uh, would be, uh, you know, we've all reached, we've all been somewhere in our life, every one of us. We all have. We've been fatigued. We've been tired. We've been stressed. We've been 
all of it. But it's like the old saying that to cowboy up, right? So you you just you know you you'll you'll find in your life you got to find your joy first off. That's why I love the movie The Bucket List, um, where it talks about you know finding your joy and finding your peace and finding your comfort and um, you know what what it took for me was kind of like I said, even though um, I reached that absolute devastating moment where I had this freak accident on an ATV. All the way up before that, I looked like Lieutenant Dan. I tell people, look, God don't care how you come to him. All right. He wants you just to, to come to him. Right. Come to him. He established this. He gave us this life. He gave us this breath. He gave us this day. He gave us everything. So Lieutenant Dan in the movie Forrest Gump, when he's on top of that ship, right, that was his moment where he just, he didn't care anymore. He had lost, he lost his legs. He had lost, he thought he had lost every bit of purpose, right? You call this a storm? I'll show you a storm, right? Well, God had a purpose for Lieutenant Dan, even though that's just a movie, right? It's an analogy. God had a purpose for him because later on when, when, when old Forrest said, you got new legs, you know, titanium, baby. <laughs> He had found, but think of the the character that they gave him when he got his new legs. He had settled down. He had calmed down. His spirit was calm. His thoughts were positive. He was he was a new man, right? And I tell people the thief on the cross. You know, I'm sure some Church of Christ is gonna get mad at me today, but you know, but the thief on the cross. He didn't have time to get down and go get baptized. He looked over at Christ and said in hebrew language but basically in par paraphrasing you're the son of man you're the you're the man god you're that all these things you know who i am yes please forgive me christ looks at god up says forgive him he knows not what he did all right if the thief on the cross can acknowledge that you know I, I what i do in my formula i take the thief on the cross i take lieutenant dan and i take a cowboy all right you can stay in the trenches and the ditches and whine and complain all you want, or you can get back on that bull and say, you, you bucked me off a hundred times, but you ain't going to do it this time. And it may get you again. But if you have the attitude of, you're not going to get me, you're not going to buck me off today. Not today, devil. Not today, right? If you have that attitude, it's all about your attitude. So I tell people, flip your script, change your attitude. And when you change your attitude, and you start looking at life like, okay, it may get me, everything may hit me today, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to weather it and I'm going to get through it. Then you're going to find a lot more peace and comfort. And then God, I just think God wants everybody to be a cowboy or a cowgirl. I don't know. That's just me. But but other than that, uh, I do have, obviously, my book here. This is the, it's the number one seller on Amazon in its category. Um, this shows just the chronological order of how donald trump and the military pulled it off and it's not boring it's it's not even it's it's got a lot more pictures when it does read it reads kind of like that it's it's not heavy paragraphs to just and it just tells you a bullet point form in a chronological order from 2015 to present day we had to cut off in december of 2023 because of printing uh, but we'll have a part two when this all uh is unveiled and whatnot uh but there's that. It's on Amazon. You can get it on Kindle and print. But then also, if you want me to sign it, I sign every one that comes through um, my, I did self-publish, so rattletrap1776.com. It goes to my Shopify. You'll find it there. I sign all those. It takes a little longer for us to get them to because of the process that we go through. Uh, so it won't be your normal two to three week. It'll, it, sometimes it's three to four weeks, depending on uh, but we're all caught up right now, so I'm a little bit quicker these days. Uh, there are a bunch of fake accounts, ladies and gentlemen. I can't tell you how many fakes there are. So on Telegram, Rattletrap1776. I also have Rattletrap Nation as a backup, uh, but there's a lot of fakes on there. Um, True Socials, at Derek Johnson, Twitter or X, whatever. It's Rattletrap1776. Rumble is also Rattletrap1776. My Facebook's. Uh, 1776 Nation, um, and then there's Rattletrap 1776 Nation on there. I have one Instagram. It's at Derek Johnson Country, all lowercase, no underscores, no periods, no numbers. 
Um, I do have one music Facebook page. It's uh, Derek Johnson Country. Um, it's got like 50,000 followers, something like that. So there's a lot of fates out there. So um, normally it's the, the one with the most numbers, but there is one. There's a Telegram account out there, a fate. Derek Johnson's got 70,000 followers. They're following the wrong person. Um, and I'm I'm sure more than likely they're they're benefiting somehow uh monetarily. Um so you got you do have to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. I will not contact you. Um uh, I will respond to you um via messages when I get messages, but I will not contact you with any kind of QFS advice or uh you know any kind of stock market advice. I won't do that. I don't initiate that. If you ask a question, I will respond to the best of my ability. Um but other than that, those are all my social media. I do have the documents.info. I have uh, DerekJohnsonCountry.com and then Rattletrap1776.com. Once again, those are my three websites. Um, so that's that's basically me. Great. Well, it's a lot to uh, a lot to unpack, a lot to think about, a lot to process. But it's all great information, and I know that uh, many of our followers and, and yours will benefit greatly. Uh, we'd love to have you back on again, Derek. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your service. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in the near, uh, not too distant future. That was great. Thank you for having me. Sure. God bless.